challenge of the day. Okay. When you get an opportunity in this game, you make a play. Yeah. The playmakers on three. One, two, three. Playmakers. Touchdown, Kansas City. The Chiefs are right in the thick of it, baby. Hello, Chiefs Kingdom. Welcome to this edition of Defending the Kingdom. Mitch Walters with you, voice of the Chiefs, along with senior team reporter Matt McMullen, one of the heroes of this training camp, the 64th in franchise history. Yesterday, when you caught the placement kick by Harrison Butker, this place erupted. It oh, was, yeah. it was, I brought tears to my eyes. It wow. was so awesome. So here's what happened. So where we are on the hill, sometimes Harrison and the special teams unit will kick field goals toward us. And if he's close enough, the field goals will make it all the way up to our media tent. So one of the first days of training camp, I thought it would be really funny if I tried to catch one. Well, we're kind of on a slope here. I'm not making excuses. Kind of on a slope? I, like I, I muffed it. I should have caught it. I muffed it. Then a few days later, I had another chance to do so. Muffed it again. So I dropped two. And then the social media team pranked me and got Harrison to autograph a ball that said, you'll get it next time. <laughs> which is hilarious. It's going to be in my basement forever. But that created quite a bit of pressure because if I didn't catch the third one, then it truly becomes a thing. Then I'm just not ever going to catch one, right? So yesterday at camp, I'm up there with Mitch, right where we're standing, actually. And a ball comes our way, and you're like, you got to go, you got to go. I'm like, all right, fine. I go out there on the slope. I lose my footing as it's coming in. I fall backwards, but you better believe I caught that football. I was not going to drop it no matter what. So, yes. It was amazing. And your head was like one quarter of an inch from being cut open on this. Uh, we're on a platform here at camp. It was You gave up your life for the Chiefs Kingdom, but it was amazing. By the way, our <laughs> Defending the Kingdom podcast from here at training camp in St. Joseph brought to you, first of all, by Mosaic. Mosaic Life Care is amazing. Their headquarters is here in St. Joseph, but they really uh, bring wellness and health care to a wide region, four-state region uh, in southeast Nebraska, in, in uh, southwest Iowa, northeast Kansas, and, of course, in northwest Missouri. They're phenomenal, and they're the presenting sponsor of CAMP and, of course, our podcast here in Defending the Kingdom. Another is Ticketmaster. We told you, Matt and I, it's your new best friend. This is the best home schedule, in my opinion, in the 64-year year history of this franchise. And then epic road games, including Fünfze in November, when the Chiefs will take on the Dolphins in Frankfurt, Germany. Now, we're going to have some fun today on this podcast. It will be entitled Goats to Go. Before we get into where we're going with this, and maybe it's camp craziness maybe <laughs> it it's, maybe it's almost a month of being in a cinder block dorm room that's taking us back to our freshman year of college yeah maybe that's it <laughs> maybe it's the groundhog day of early mornings to late nights uh i don't know maybe we're losing a little bit you know it's like the wedding crashers scene of vince vaughn you know maybe i had an imaginary friend as a kid maybe his <laughs> name was shiloh maybe he let me beat him in chess all the time uh checkers all the time but before we get into goats to go and why we're even going to deal with it let's go Around the world, and before we do that, this is a pretty cool announcement, uh, and this is uh, fits right in with your uh, going around the world because we know Chiefs Kingdom has no borders. If you follow Defending the Kingdom, you know we're on every continent, and no Chiefs fan should have to celebrate game day alone. We have Chiefs Kingdom worldwide. It exists to connect the kingdom throughout the world. We kid you not. Help keep the kingdom close by sharing your information. Now, we have a URL here. Uh, you can go to the Chiefs app, too, and find this. But it's chiefs.com uh, backslash Chiefs Kingdom Worldwide, and you can get connected. We want to see where you're at, who you are, why you're such a great Chiefs fan, and we give you a taste of that every time we do Defending the Kingdom when Matt gets in his spaceship and goes around the world. It reminds me of Prestige Worldwide. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> From Step Brothers. Yeah, I love yes. it. <laughs> Maybe we, <laughs> we have a Wedding Prestige Crashers World reference World. and a Step I Brothers I won't say reference. the famous song that was <laughs> played that night, but yeah. yeah. This is a PG podcast. Yeah. Anyway, let's go around the world. So we have a listener in <laughs> Switzerland. Uh, we heard from a Brookfield High School alum. Remember our last episode yeah. where um, I couldn't figure out what the town I passed through was called on the way to St. Louis? It is Brookfield. They are the Bulldogs. They play for the Bell game against every Marceline, year against right? Marceline. Yes, it's the Bell game. So we figured that one out. We heard from Penny in Calhoun, Missouri, and Bob in Unionville, Missouri. We've heard from both of them before. Uh, we have a listener originally from St. Joe, but they live in Tucson now. Uh, they're turning 50 on December 31st, and guess where they'll be? In Kansas City for the Chiefs and Bengals game. Great no way better to way to spend an anniversary. And Matt Bushman, 
Uh, he's from Tucson, Arizona. There we go. Happy early birthday. Hopefully we get a victory against the Bengals on your birthday. Mm. We have Russ in West Wichita. Uh, Levi is watching from Hill Air Force Base in Utah. They're flying home uh, this week to Kansas City, so welcome home, Levi. Uh, Lynn is in Goshen, Indiana, 45 minutes from where Garrick Dieter went to high school. Mm -hmm. uh, they grew up Amish in the 90s and would read about the Chiefs in the newspaper and keep up with the Chiefs. Great college there. Goshen, Indiana's got a great college. Goshen College, I believe. Pretty cool. Yep. Uh, we have a listener from northern New York, a.k.a. they call it southern Canada. <laughs> uh, been a fan for 33 years. Ooh, that sounds like Bill's country to me. It is does. That, and is that Bill's country? I'm sure it is. And they're defending mm -hmm. the kingdom up there in Bill's country. Mm. Uh, we heard from our German defenders in Dortmund, Caro, and Mattis. Caro and Mattis, I believe, uh, in Dortmund. Um, then we also heard from Shea in New York City. They'll be at the Chiefs and Jets game in week four. And there's one more. I met a young lady up here at camp. Uh, a few days ago from Joplin, uh, who listens to our podcast every single week. Uh, I did not write down her name. I wish I had. It was kind of a million things were going on. But you know who you are. Uh, <laughs> next time you're at camp or just shoot me a message, let me know your name. I'll be sure to read you uh, over our next Around the World segment. Perfect. It's, it's Tutmerlied, which is I'm sorry for not knowing where that German town is. So I'm working on my German, right? We'll du be there soon enough, my friend. Duolingo every night, later, later night, in the old cinder block dorm room. I got another one to add to this because they were here at camp. They are live in the UK, so they're living in London right now. Uh, but originally from the States, but living in London is Josh Dombacher. His son was here, Moose. Moose Dombacher. Moose. They are, they're defending the kingdom in London. And uh, also, his wife was here, um, uh, Tats uh, Tatsiana. Tatsiana. And uh, she is from France. So she's right. from France, living in the UK. They're all Chiefs fans. Came to St. Joseph on a pilgrimage. Wow. How about that? That's awesome. Chiefs Kingdom Worldwide. There you go. <laughs> you just got to take a prestige worldwide. every time. <laughs> I love it. That's a great. I love it, Step Brothers. Uh, well, it's another thing that we like, and this is comedic, uh, because Matt will send me some really <laughs> Great text, notable text. Hey, did you see her? And we'll get like late night text, and then he'll send me crazy ones. You sent me one, and maybe again we're losing our mind at camp. What is goats to go? There is this patch of kind of unkept grass uh, in a park near my house where there's like some poison ivy and <laughs> just all kinds of overgrowth because it's right on the edge of the woods. And rather than get a lawnmower or hire some people to go clear it all out, the city that I live in, which is a suburb of Kansas City, had a great idea of hiring a goat herd where the goats just go out and they eat everything. And they're there for a month, and they've provided my wife and I whenever I go home, because some nights I'll go home from camp and come up early in the morning, we'll just walk down with the dog and see them. And there's 30 goats just working, clearing out overgrowth, and I'll send Mitch some, some videos or, or photos whenever I'm there, and you've been infatuated with it. It's hilarious. Yeah. Well, I love your dog, but watching having your dog stare at these goats, <laughs> they put up an electric fence. It's like very... You pay the goat herder to bring the goats in and clear it out. And they, they move the fence along. It's not super electrified. It's, it would just give them a little you know, bump or something if uh, they touched it, just so they don't go in. And so, like, foxes and stuff don't go in. Uh, but, yeah, they move the, uh, the fence where they need the, everything cleared, and they've... They've been doing great work. They've been moving it along. Every day they're, they seem to be in a new place, but it's a brilliant idea, and I think maybe we should get involved with our own little goat company on the side. We should. It's so entrepreneurial. <laughs> um, and, you know, I grew up on a farm, right, Smith Center, Kansas, Smith County, Kansas. We had chickens, and we had hogs, and we had cattle, but my dad sold all the goats after because he didn't want to deal with them. They would build a shed for the goats. It'd be a hailstorm. Where are the goats? They're on top of the shed. <laughs> like, these are just goats. So now we're going, where are you guys going with this? Because you are losing your mind at camp. <laughs> it's day goats 14, to everyone. Goats to go, because we know there are two goats on this team oh, yeah. that just deserve mention. And we're going to go in a different direction, because the first goat we know is Patrick Mahomes. You and I have spewed out stats on this guy um, for years. In, in 80 games as a starter, there is not even close to any quarterback who's ever played in this league to be his equal. There's only two major quarterback stats that he does not rank number one in after Eddie starts. Interceptions per game, and he's barely behind Aaron Rodgers in that one. But what we want to emphasize, and the quarterback series on Netflix showed what you and I see so often that goes way beyond the stats, is why is he the GOAT is the way, and I just talked to Andy Reid about this. He said, Patrick Mahomes takes nothing for granted. He never gets satisfied. 
But Matt, when I watch Patrick Mahomes operate daily, this is May or March, April, May, June, he's like a pseudo coach, a pseudo general manager, a pseudo offensive coordinator. He works with all those guys. But I've never seen an offensive player this prominent that deals with the defense like he does. He's, he's an amazing, and he is a GOAT, way beyond the stats. I know we're saying it's way beyond the stats. Can I give you a few stats just to put what I'm about to say into context? Sure. Because I, I love doing it. Because it's just, it's crazy what he's done. I mean, you well, mentioned. You need, you need an external hard drive for all these stats because it's, it's nuts. And, you know, if you go on Twitter and uh, a lot of the advanced metrics, they'll have, like, uh, graphs, right? And they, they'll plot different quarterbacks on the graph to show uh, where they rank. And they have all these different advanced tools that they use. And one of the kind of running jokes now is that as long as Patrick Mahomes is in the upper right-hand corner, meaning he's at the very <laughs> best of everyone, that means the stat that they've created is probably accurate. And that's just the case. Think about what he did last season. He accounted for 5,420 yards of total offense, which included six receiving yards, which I found hilarious on a pass to himself. And what, 358 on the ground? Because that, yep. that was some really noteworthy rushing stats. Yep, and the most passing yards in the NFL. That all added up to the most yards of total offense by any player in NFL history. I get they have the extra game. Still, it's absolutely incredible. He's the only quarterback in NFL history um, or check that. He's the seventh quarterback in league history to own multiple 40 touchdown seasons. He's just 27 years old to have multiple 40 touchdown seasons. And also, you mentioned the 80 career games that he's played in the regular season. He has the most touchdown passes with 192, the most passing yards with 24,241, uh, and the most completions uh, through 80 career games of any quarterback in NFL history. That's part of it. A lot of great stats. We've seen quarterbacks come through the NFL and have lots of great stats, though. What does he also have? He started 14 career playoff games. He's not even 28 years old, and he has started 14 career playoff games. He already has the eighth most touchdown passes in postseason history at 27 years old. And, and winning he, 11 of those 14 games. And never played on the road in the playoffs. He has, what, 11 home games and three Super Bowls? Never played on the road because of how good he is in the regular season. So why do I say all of this. It's because he is off to the greatest start for any quarterback in NFL history. We believe that when it's all said and done, he has a great case to be called the greatest quarterback in NFL history, and he's just 27 years old. But why is he so special? Because he doesn't let any of that get to his head. He is still just a normal, regular guy, a normal, regular teammate, and all he wants is to get better. He doesn't let any of that inflate his ego. He's confident, but not egotistical. It's a very thin line, and he manages to tote it perfectly. The way he commands the offense, the way he encourages his teammates, and the way he is a coach on the field is second to none. And there's one example from today. There's this thing called the quarterback challenge, where when practice is kind of winding down, the quarterbacks will come over to the field right behind us, and they'll do fun stuff like try to throw the football in a trash can or try to hit the goal post, just fun things like that. And the quarterback coaches get involved. It's a whole thing. Well, when he wasn't throwing the ball when it was Shane Bouchelle or uh, Chris Oladokun or even David Girardi, the quarterback coach, guys like that, uh, or Matt Nagy, he's going crazy, jumping up and down like it's just you and me playing a, a game in our backyard. I mean, he just is so much a giant kid. And he also is a coach on the field at the same time and the best player in the league. It's just amazing how you can have those three different things where you're so cerebral, but you're having so much fun, and you are so good all at the same time. That is why he's the greatest player in our game right now. And he's so involved with the defense. This is what I think sets him apart, even from Brady, Rodgers, all those guys. Last year, the Chiefs played the Titans. Might have mentioned this on an earlier podcast. It was a Monday night game, and the offense struggled. The Titans good defensively. Mike Vrabel knows what he's doing, kind of muddies the game up, right? But Malik Willis is playing, and the Chiefs pull it out in overtime. So they give the fickle finger of fate award or whatever they gave to, you know, the most MVP of the game. They gave it to Patrick. He goes, this isn't mine. It's the defense. <laughs> he took it into the defensive team meeting the next day and said, this is your guys. Wow. This is you. Steve Spagnuolo said it's, it's happened one other time. Steve's been, you know, in this game for 40,000 years at 40,000 places. It had such a, it, it moved Spag so much. He said, this is why our defense loves this guy. And I'm telling you, that is rare at any level of football where a defense loves your quarterback. It just, it can be jealous. 
and but it's not that way here. So goat one of goats to go is Patrick for Holmes, Patrick Mahomes for way more than um, the stats. Oh, and by the way, he's had the best play of camp so far. Other the second best one, other than your catch of Butker's <laughs> placement, is his behind the back screen pass. <laughs> yeah. On Saturday, I went nuts on that. It was a real football play. It yeah. wasn't quarterback challenge. You're, not, you're never going to see them like throw at the crossbar in a game. They run a screen. He's looking off to the right. They run a screen to the left. He goes behind the back like Magic Johnson in the Showtime Laker days. It's perfect. <laughs> it was during 11-on-11. 11 11. It was an actual play. Like, it was being installed. It was being worked on. Like, it's a real thing. And the funny thing is uh, that day of practice, both of our wives were up here, and we were just talking to them, hanging out, kind of watching practice. And when that happened, you and I both just screamed <laughs> at the same time. And then I think Tammy and Ellie looked at each other just like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> And we're like high fiving. It was it was awesome, and we posted it on social. If you haven't seen it yet, you can find it on uh, Chiefs Twitter and I think Instagram. But yeah, a behind the back pass, no big deal. That's just what he does. But it was perfect. Like if he runs out in a game, there's no way you can defend that play. Because <laughs> no, humans can't do that because you don't expect them to. But he can. Goats to go in uh, Matt's neighborhood. There's actually goats that have been hired with electric fence to clear out a park full of crap, <laughs> and they're doing it. Man, they eat anything. Goats. They're very stubborn. They are. Uh, the second goat, though, isn't stubborn. Well, maybe he kind of is. But Travis Kelsey, and we're just going to end the podcast this way. I've heard for years, okay, only my 30th year in the league, greatest tight end ever. And Tony Gonzalez, I love him. I called every one of his plays in 12 seasons as a chief. No one, no one is even close to Travis Kelsey as being the best tight end in this league. Travis Kelsey has changed the game, meaning – for years, you would list a wide receiver in productivity, right? You would list running backs as receivers, catches, yards, touchdowns. You'd list tight ends. Kelsey's changed this because now we're listing them as pass catchers. Let me give you an example. Last year in the National Football League, rece receptions for first downs. Number one in the whole NFL, Justin Jefferson. We know how awesome he is for the Vikings. 80 catches. Next, Travis Kelsey was 78. <laughs> Touchdown receptions, number one, Devontae Adams. Number two, Travis Kelsey with 12, two behind Adams. And Kelsey had none in the last six weeks of the season. He's just, he's, he's obliterating stats, but he's actually changing the game in many ways. And he's the model of consistency. This is not a knock on George Kittle. I think George Kittle's a great player. Great player, love him. He's had a couple of really great prolific offensive seasons, but then just some pretty good seasons mixed in there. Travis Kelsey seemingly every single year has a prolific offensive season. He has seven consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. You put that in the context of, first of all, tight ends. No tight end has ever done that. Actually, the record for total 1,000-yard seasons by a tight end before Travis came along was four, and now he's on the verge of doubling that, doing them all in a row. The only other player with that many 1,000-yard seasons in a row currently playing with an active streak is Mike Evans on the Buccaneers, who's, of course, a wide receiver. Look at what Travis did last year. 110 catches for 1,338 yards, 12 touchdowns. Just one of the best pass catchers in the game. He is the only player with 90 or more receptions in each of the last five seasons. And again, to get back to the model of consistency, uh, since 2017, he has the second most catches, the third most receiving yards, and the fourth most touchdown catches of any player in the NFL. He is the best tight end in the game. He is the best tight end to ever play. And I would argue he's one of the best pass catchers to ever play this game, not just pigeonholed as a tight end. We'll include receivers in that as well. He's phenomenal. He's asked to do so many things, an ISO Y position where he lines up as basically a split end. Uh, two years ago, he lined up 29.8% of the times out there, by far more than anybody else. Um, but he's also asked to do all the blocking and all the – I mean, Coach Reed does not give him like a day off or, hey, you're not going to run this play because you have to go wham block the guy. Nope. Kels has to do all of that. But it's also his unselfishness. His work ethic is only probably equaled by Patrick Mahomes. This spring and summer, you, you and I watch every OTA, right? We watch every piece of mini camp. You and I would look at each other going, what is he doing? He's working like a rookie free agent trying to make the team. After that OTA is late, I go – he goes, it's how I am. It's how I'm wired. I can't, and I, I don't want to let these guys down. And so his effort as the goat of all tight ends, goats to go, is it permeates through this whole team, including the defensive guys. It's really important as well. And Patrick Mahomes is the same way. This is something we talk about a lot, but we talk about it because it's important and it's frankly incredible and uh, rare in this league that you have the two best players 
uh, at their position. You have two players that are, are going to the Hall of Fame one day, and they're attacking practices in May and in June like it is the Super Bowl. They don't have to do that, but they do it for two reasons. One is so that they can get better because they're never satisfied with what they've already done, which says a lot about them because they've accomplished what people only hope to achieve in their careers already. But it's also about setting an example and showing every other player on this roster who are hoping to have great careers or who are in the midst of pretty good careers. If Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes are working like this in June and in May, I have to be working that hard because these guys are going to Canton one day and I'm just trying to make this team or I'm trying to carve out a role in this team. If they're working that hard, I have to work that hard or maybe even harder. And just setting that example is so important. And that's one of the reasons this team has been able to sustain success all of these years because of the example those two guys set. It's it's incredible. Now, our podcast from here at camp are brought to you by Mosaic Life Care. Of course, are terrific as the presenting sponsor of this camp, Ticketmaster, your new best friend. And you can be connected all throughout with Chiefs.com slash Chiefs Kingdom Worldwide. We want to see where you're at, what you're doing, why you're such a crazy Chiefs fan. And thanks for putting, like, Prestige Worldwide in my head. We will not try to wreck the boat because <laughs> no. it, it led to real problems, right? It did. Yeah. Who will get the family what, Bible? Let, let's just sail the boat to Las Vegas and win the Super Bowl. How about that? He's John C. Riley. I'm Will Farrell. <laughs> We're the Step Brothers. Uh, maybe not. But thanks for joining us on this edition of Defending the Kingdom. Yes, we're losing our mind. Ten, five, touchdown! Lock it down! And the celebration begins at Arrowhead.